Hello everybody, Carla Nicole. Welcome to Live with Carla Nicole. Um, happy Sunday everybody. It is absolutely gorgeous today. I'm hoping it stays that way. Um, started a little bit late today, but it's okay. We are here. So um, I want to talk today about revenge. So for all of you that have never been to my show before, I want to welcome you to my show. I am Carla Nicole. I'm a single mother of two children. And my spiritual mission is to help people to advance their life, help people to um, come up with better solutions, come up with better um, resolutions, if you will, in life. And enjoy life while we're here. You know, uh, life isn't forever. So, um, you know, while we're here, I'm hoping that we um, can, definite, can definitely um, improve our life while we are here. So, uh, I want to welcome every, everybody, Toya, Doug, Vincent, Sunil, Rat, all glad you guys are here and uh, ready to get some um, information on being revengeful. So, I guess I want to start off with talking about um, myself a little bit. I think it's important that you guys can kind of get an idea um, where I'm coming from when it comes to um, my heart space and what I've been through personally. I think it's important that you guys see what I've been through um, and kind of how I navigated in my life through the years. Um, and then when I did navigate through the years, uh, what's, <laughs> what are some of the lessons I learned? And also, what are some of the things that um, I think is important that I share with you? Um, first of all, you know, I'm always telling everybody I am a wisdom coach, so I'm here to heal and assist people with, with their life journey. But by no means am I perfect. I have my own storms I go through. I have my own challenges I go through. I have my own challenges. So I want to let you guys know it's not always about I'm Miss Perfect because that's not the case. I am also coached. So I have spiritual leaders in my life to keep me balanced because I have my moments in time where I'm feeling a little frustrated or hurt or, or, or you know, off balance. And to me, I believe any real coach or any real um, person that's trying to empower others to be the best them needs to do the same for themselves because what good are we if we don't have someone to lean on or talk to or um, to actually um, you know throw some of our scenarios to so that we can get sharper on on refinement you know life is about refinement we have to refine all the time it's very important that we um, refine who we are we sharpen who we are we make sure that we're trying to always go for excellence. It doesn't make any sense to be in this life mediocre. So if anything, we need to be striving to be the best us because we can't be anybody else. All we can be is, is who we are and who we were born to be. We cannot be anybody else. So with that said, um, I wanted to shed a little light on a scenario I went through. So, you know, when we talk about revenge, a lot of times we talk about relationships and we talk about normally intimate relationships, right? Either it's revenge against somebody we, that hurt us or revenge against somebody who uh, we felt got over or whatever, what have you. So I'm gonna give you an example of something that happened with me. I was dating um, one of my exes at the time. Good morning, Jay Neri. Um, and I was dating one of my exes one time. And um, you know, when you are uh, in a relationship, especially at that time, I was very big about faithfulness and being faithful and all this and that. So anyway, I found out that he uh, decided to move on with a different woman. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. So was I hurt? Absolutely. It took me a long time to get over it. But I'm, I'm sharing this story for, with you guys so you can kind of see what went on. So anyway, um, I was hurt, I was upset. And um, he decided to move on with another woman. And when he did that, I mean, it, 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 was, it was hurtful because, of course, you're thinking, well, when we were together, you didn't want to be in a relationship. But now you're in a relationship. So rather than me showing out and acting a fool 
and you know uh, going off off the deep end and, and having a having a, a big blowout with him and, and so on and so forth I just removed myself from his life I removed myself from the scenario and I walked away and um, when I walked away it was one of the hardest things I've ever done but I guess you know when we walk away from sometimes our hurt um, you just never know what's gonna come up later so anyway I'm gonna fast forward so I'm gonna fast forward to when he reached out later and actually advised to me that she actually had an affair on him and of course at this point you would think because of the fact that he hurt me that I would feel extremely flabbergasted and excited and just jovial from the fact that he was hurt so to be honest I felt terrible about it and I was like really and he was like yeah you know she she hurt me with a you know her high school sweetheart and this and that and the fourth and and just was really upset and you know not to mention that they had a child together so I was like wow I said well you know um I ended up being a shoulder for him to cry on um not literally cry on or literally laying his shoulder his head on my shoulder but I literally allowed him to talk to me about what he went through, how I felt, the pain, the, you know, the, the, the hurt. And um, I was like, you know, hindsight, they say, is always 2020, right? Well, I guess one of the things, and I never, and let me just say this, I never, when I, when I actually went through this with him, I never got to the point where I was like, ha, 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 you got hurt, ah, ha, 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 ha. It just never was in my soul. I never felt happy that he got hurt. And I guess one of the things I wanted to share with everybody on here that feels like, you know, screw that. I'm going to get at him. I'm going to fix her. She wants to mess around on me and how dare she or he do that to me? I just want you guys to get this. This is so important because, you know, sometimes our storms help someone else. I'm sorry to hear that, Khalid, that you went through this. Man, listen, um, when they go through, when you go through that, please, please understand that if you at all gave a damn about the person you loved at the time, it is not something that you want to gloat about when they are hurt it is not where you want to take a a, a a knife and stab them in the back harder and be happy and jovial that they've been hurt if you ever cared about that person so i said all that to say this i really i really felt like damn you know i, I don't want to see you hurt and even though now get this now i want y'all to get how powerful this was even though I loved him to the inch degree, he, you know, my thing is not, we're not always somebody's cup of tea. You know what I'm saying? So even though we love someone and we feel someone and we feel like we want to be with someone and they just don't reciprocate back to us in the same level or with the same regard doesn't necessarily mean that there's nobody else out there for us. It just means that we just wasn't what they wanted to be with. And when I understood that, I was like, oh, <laughs> I get it now. So he was my lesson. He was my lesson on a lot of levels, not just this particular situation, but a lot of levels. He taught me some things. And I actually, after to be totally honest, he is my soulmate. And that's what soulmates are. Soulmates are here to are placed into your life to teach you something. Not necessarily that you're going to end up with them, but they're here to teach you something. And when they when I was when I was understanding, oh, so um, me loving you and then having to let you go prematurely than when I was ready to let you go, and then seeing you get hurt by someone else and then 
understanding that it didn't feel good to me. I didn't feel happy that you got hurt. Changed my life forever because I, I was able to see, oh, so someone actually has been hurt in the process, but not only him, but her as well. So I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to gloat about this. I'm going to help you through this. And so, you know, that's basically what I've done at this point. And my thing is, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy to walk away from somebody that you care about. It's not. But it's also it's also um, really not the same. And I'm about to tell you guys something that I don't think you guys can even possibly imagine. Sometimes when we feel like we want to get revenge on somebody. Now, I want to talk about this from a whole different perspective, because I've been seeing this video going around and I'm sure you guys have seen it going around where the husband is in the bedroom with another woman and the wife walks in and she walks in and she's questioning the woman and what's going on and who and this and that and anyway she starts swinging on the woman that that she um you know had caught her husband with and she was just absolutely upset with the whole scenario and you know totally understandable but what I want you guys to get because this is very important for people that are in relationships we do not own them we are not we are not in possession of the person we're in relationship with they are not our possession we do not own them we do not own their heart mind spirit body none of that we don't own them so I really want you guys to get this because I think a lot of people lose sight of when they're in a relationship. That means now I take ownership over their whole entire existence. And that is not true. This is why so many relationships are going awry, ending up in divorce, being volatile and all this other stuff. We have to understand that the person, our partner, our significant other, our lover and all that, they are are there because they choose to be there. And that's a beautiful thing. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they may not change their mind. So it's very important that we love without expectations, number one. And we love with understanding that they may change their mind. But if they change their mind, your life is not over. Your life is not incomplete. It just means it's now time for you to move on to a different phase in life. That's it. That's all. But she was so irate, this this wife on the video. She was so irate and so belligerent and yelling and screaming and beating up on the woman. And I'm like, see. But what I did hear, what I don't think a lot of people may have heard, but this is what I was hearing when she was questioning the woman and wanting all this clarity about who, who she was and how long you known him and all this other stuff. But what I paid attention to more than anything was the shakiness in her voice. And the shakiness in her voice meant she was hurt. She was hurt. And she was hurt, but her swinging on the woman didn't make it any better. It didn't. It didn't make matter of fact, it probably made her day worse because her husband had spent a lot of time trying to hold her back, trying to tell her not to put her hands on the woman and all this other stuff. But I want you guys. Hey, Jean, glad to see you. Um, but what I want you guys to get is even though, you know, um, you hurt and you're upset or anything like that with a, with with your mate, I want you guys to get this. This is very important. If you are upset or hurt, that is what you feel. So even if you do something that you believe is going to be the same level of hurt to the other person, it does not necessarily mean that they're going to receive the hurt in the same way to which you received the hurt. What does that mean? Well, some people may think, well, I'm going to get back at them for what they've done to me. So I'm going to get back at them in the same means to where they did the, in the same way to way they did to me. But let me let me explain something to you. We are all wired differently. So something that may hurt me may not hurt Jean. That's just said for me to enjoy my day may not have hurt Channing 
in the same way, may not have hurt Annette or Honey, may not have hurt any of you the same way that it hurt me. But if I believe I'm going to do the same act towards that person to get back at them so they can feel the same hurt, they may not feel that hurt the same. So are you really actually getting revenge? Are you really getting the revenge you believe you you uh, are, you know, so focused on getting? I mean, because a lot of times we think we're getting something and we're not. For instance, you guys know sometimes, you know, we can we can feel somebody, we can like somebody and hey, I'm going to get back at them for doing this and doing that. And I'm going to do it the same way they did it to me. And it's not going to do the same to them because they're wired different. So I'm just I just want you guys to understand it's not really about getting back at someone. Sometimes we have to understand the lesson that we had or how we got hurt or how we got impacted on on the level that we did is just for us to get a lesson from. Not necessarily for us to say, well, since they since they did that to me, I'm going to get back at them. As we know, it doesn't even work in war. It doesn't even work in war when we want to acquire someone else's land or we want to acquire someone else's property or we want to take somebody else's stuff because we feel we deserve it instead of them. We know we didn't earn it. So it's still not the same. The blood, sweat and tears that someone has built their own empire on. And someone comes and steals it from them, takes it from them and then goes right into the role of being the person that acquired it does not feel the same honor as the person that actually did the work. I'm trying to get you guys to see this because sometimes revenge is looked at as sweet, but it's not. (laughs) It's not sweet at all. Matter of fact, it's very detrimental to a lot of people and you never get that same feeling that you want to receive. Even if you see that the person is hurt, There has been, I'm going to use another example about cheating, since cheating is a very common thing going on recently, either male or female or whatever. Since cheating is one of the biggest things going on, I'm going to use that again as an example. So now we have wives that are cheating or husbands that are cheating and they're cheating on each other and figuring one is going to feel the same pain that they felt. And it not necessarily because not everybody receives cheating as a violation. Some people don't care if you cheat or not. That's not what their their main focus on being with you is about. Sometimes they just love you regardless of your violations or your extramarital affairs. Some sometimes that has nothing to do with how they feel about you. But a lot of times we spend a lot of time on trying to prove that we're going to get back at them for what they did to us. And and it's wasted energy and time. Because it's really not focusing on the refinement of you. See, sometimes we get hurt and we and we indulge in pain and we we feel just disrespected or we feel um, I know a perfect thing. Sometimes we just feel unacknowledged. Sometimes we just feel unvalued. Sometimes we feel ignored. Sometimes we feel disappointment and all of that stuff can feel is a is a feeling. Yes, but that doesn't mean that because you feel it and you do the same thing to that person, they're going to feel the same thing. That doesn't necessarily mean that. So sometimes we have to sit back and say, you know what, even though I I have felt some pain from someone, perhaps maybe I need to just pause and understand maybe they didn't mean to hurt me or maybe, you know, even if they did mean to hurt me, I don't have to react to it to in an ugly way. Maybe I should just disassociate. Sometimes I could just walk away and it doesn't, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean I'm, I'm better or worse. It just means our time is up as, as associates, as friends, as family, as coworkers, as business partners, or whatever, what have you. Sometimes we just have to walk away and say, okay, it's fine. But it takes a lot of years to get to this. Hey, Regina, welcome, love. It takes, a, 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 it takes years to get to this. But I'm trying to help you see that 
just because you believe that I'm going to get back at them by doing the same thing to them doesn't necessarily mean they're going to channel it or receive it the same. So you're really putting forth energy in a negative way to receive a negative result and you may not get <laughs> you may not get any reaction. You might get, you know, somebody says I don't care. I'm not I'm not bothered by it. It doesn't matter to me. I, I mean, I whatever. And then you're like, oh, I did all that. I exerted all this energy on trying to get back at what they did to me. And look at what happened. Nothing. They don't even care about me. They don't even they don't even have the same. I'm going to get back at him by cheating on him now. But does it work? Really? I mean, because I'll tell you something. I, I had a friend, man, since we're talking about adultery, I had a friend, man, that, that cheated on her husband. And let me tell you something. It wasn't because he cheated on her. She was just, you know, she just had, she had a moment with, you know, with someone else. And I kept warning her, warning her, like, man, you better stop. Like, you know, you're going to lose your husband and this man will do anything for you. You're, you're just, you're, 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 you're making a bad choice. And I kept telling her, kept telling her, she just wouldn't want to listen. And this guy was just scum of the earth, biker dude, just no respect for herself or her. And, and she had an upstanding husband that, that loved and adored her. And I was just like, man, you're making a bad mistake. You know, I would stand there and tell her, like, you need to stop. This is going to cost you your family. It's going to cost you your marriage. And when I tell you, it was hurtful because not necessarily because of the fact that I, I had to see her go through the whole restoration of her marriage. But I, I the day she, you know looked at me with her with her eyes bloodshot it was it was the most detrimental feeling I mean I was just very sickened by it and then when she described her husband balling up in a ball from hurt I was just like this could have been avoided I kept telling you you know what I mean I kept telling you to stop I kept telling you to stop and I guess I said that to say this, you know, you don't know what the revenge is going to do to somebody. It may look like you're getting back at them, but you don't know what that's going to do to somebody. And revenge sometimes is worse off and it costs you more. Not just, you know, you seeing them hurt, but you seeing them maybe taking their life because of it. So it's just not worth it. Sometimes we have to walk away and we need to step back and say, you know what? I want to see the best for you. Be it whether it's you and me or, or, or you and someone else. I just wish the best for you. But it comes from deciding that you must refine you. You must have a pride in yourself that when you look in the mirror you're not embarrassed for what you've done or didn't do like i said when my ex was hurt i was i was very you know what i'm saying i was very proud that i didn't gloat in his pain i wasn't happy to see him hurt i wasn't excited to hear that she was she was the culprit or the person he chose was you know, not for him. That, that did not make me feel good. It really didn't. I really wanted to see him happy, whether with me or not, because it's not about that. It's about giving a damn about someone I, I, I you know, loved. So I didn't want to see him hurt. And that includes, even if it's with a woman that he was with, um, you know, when he was supposed to be with me. It, it, was, it was not, you know what I'm saying? It just wasn't it really wasn't necessary for me to sit back and just say, I'm going to get back at him and this and that. It's just not worth it. OK, so, you know, it's very important that I give you guys different perspectives. The forgiveness series is for that. Forgiving people is not the easiest thing, but you got to remember when you forgive them, you find some peace. You refine yourself. 
you find yourself more joyful in the inside because of who you are. Because you're like, man, listen, I feel so much better that I am free from not wanting to see you hurt. You know what I'm saying? It's better to feel free, to be happy, to be honored. But it's really hateful when you decide, I'm going to get back at him. Understand this. You are taking energy from your soul. I'm going to let that simmer for a minute. You're taking energy from your soul. That you could be using in a positive way. <laughs> a positive way. So here's, here's one of the things I want you guys to think about. If you get really burn up and you really want to get at somebody and you really want to get that revenge I want you guys to think about something take that negative energy and turn it into a positive go visit somebody at hospice and talk to them <laughs> go visit somebody in hospice and talk to them go spend some time with some elders at a nursing home that doesn't have any family around here Go and, and, and take a look at the children that need help. Go to, an ho go to a homeless shelter. Go feed the needy. Do something positive rather than taking that negative energy that you want to do against somebody else to get back at them for what they did to you and turn it into a positive. It doesn't cost you nothing but time that you would be using on something negative to try to get at somebody that you feel deserves it Turn it into a positive because that's something that you will get back and you will definitely get it back. That is a karmic tie that you will get back, which is positive ones. Man, I was so mad I was going to do this and do that to this person and decided, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go and help some elderly, see what they need and, and uh, get them some groceries or something or, or, or take them out for a, a walk at the park or go grab my nephews or nieces and take them to the park and, and take them to get them some ice cream. Do something positive because you guess what? The karmic tie that you then have after you do the good act out of your heart because really you're refining, you're changing the energy that you want to put on something negative into a positive. So what you're doing is you're taking that act and you're refining yourself. And when you see the joy on someone's face or the thank you that someone gives you because you've done a kind act for them, it's going to do what to your soul? It's going to pour into you like you would never believe. And one thing that I learned from my daddy, if I didn't learn nothing else, he always told me, when you do something good for people, it comes back tenfold. You just don't know how many times my dad has done good, kind acts for people over the years. And you just cannot imagine how much that man is blessed to this day. He's a man that walks it. So I know that it truly works. So when you refine yourself and learn, see, what we have to do is we have to learn that it is not easy to be a good person, but it is harder to be it is harder to be mean and hateful and just belligerent to people. That's why it says it's important that we look for the good in our souls. See, we're all good people. It's just sometimes we're good people, but make bad choices <laughs> or we make bad decisions. And life is full of decisions, is it not? Don't we have many, many, many decisions over and over and over again? We have to make decisions. But we also have to be mindful that what we do with our energy and how we channel our energy and what we place in our energy field, be it ugly, negative, uh, disgruntled thoughts, that stuff is toxic. It really is. And so we need to make sure we're mindful of what goes inside of our mind. And that includes revenge. Revenge is not a good thing. And it's not sweet. Even though it's called sweet revenge, it's really not. It, it, it's, um, it's really a toxin to the, to the mind, body, and the soul. So I hope I helped you guys. I really do. Um, and now I want to go through the comments. Let's take a look here. All right. A lot of you I appreciate so much for commenting. It's so important. Um, so let's talk about what Honey said. She said that um, 
The best revenge is to leave them completely alone. She says she's living this now. Okay, awesome, honey. I'm glad to hear you, you have come up with that as a resolution. Um, sometimes you do have to disassociate depending upon the soul of the person. Um, not always do you have to, but sometimes you have to disassociate for sometimes a time or an, uh, a time and space. And other times you have to have to do so um, basically because, you know, that person just doesn't seek to refine or change. So sometimes you do have to actually um, disassociate. So thanks so much for sharing. Um, Mookie said that um, that's a perfect toxic to bring up for everyone. But the truth of the matter is not everyone or everybody is not going to listen to whatever someone has to say. That is so true, Mookie. You are right. They are not going to listen. But hopefully, um, over the over the years, I've learned that, you know, people usually come to my lives and watch um, when they're going through something. So if they don't want to listen, it's okay. But they'll be back because <laughs> they're going to go through some hard times. Regina is one of my partners uh, for the Wisdom Focus Group, and she said she's. Uh, she says I walk away um, with love. She says especially when you loved hard. Some folks just raise different. Yes, very good, Regina. She made a good point that some people are just raised different. So you know, and I call it that some of us all come from a different pedigree. So when it's a different pedigree, when you're not from the same, you know, cloth, then sometimes we, we notice that um, people are wired different and, and uh, they, they deal with things differently than we do. So, you know, it's just vitally important that we respect that. But we understand that not everybody can, can fit into our lives. And I always say, I'm not everybody's acquired taste. So I've learned over the years that... You know, some gents might get with me and some might not because they're like, nah, she's just not my cup of tea. And that's fine. Um, but you can't always think that you're you're the shoe that every man's going to fit. So it's just not the case. So we have to be mindful that, like she said, everybody's just not of the same cloth. She says she lets go and she lets God. She said we can't fix or follow. So glad she left it, left with her mind and body. I mean, her uh, mind and health. And that's true as well. You know, um, if you are a spiritual person um, and God is is the center of your life, as for me, um, that is definitely the case. Um, I do. I do have uh, God to um, handle those battles. I think it's important that, you know, um, the God of your understanding has a job to do. And so we have to allow and let that job be handled. And so for me, I agree 100 percent that we have to let let some things go and, and let, you know, God handle that. Um, Mookie also said he said he's so happy that he's not in a relationship because, number one, he said he's not with anyone. Two, uh, he has never been with anybody before. And number three, it's better to be single than to be married. <laughs> I got you, Mookie. Hey, you know, um, the truth of the matter is. Um, there just needs to be, I think, some some different ways to look at marriage. Uh, I think it's very important that um, people look outside of the fact that, you know, relationships are what they are. But sometimes relationships um, are better without labels. Um, and I just think that the most important thing for, for you is to find out what's best for you. It's not about what other people say or whatever other people tell you to do, it's basically um, what's best for you. So that's what's definitely most important. Um, she said, uh, and Regina said, after all she's been through, she agrees, and that she's glad at 45 she's got it right now. Like, yes, absolutely. I love you too, sis. Um, it's, it's very important. Regina has met, you know, her and I are the same age, and... When we sit back and think about it, it's vitally important that we realize that we 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 um, figure this stuff out. Um, and I wish I would have figured out a lot of things earlier. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. But when you sit back and you look at it and you realize, well, wait a minute, you know. Having a decent relationship doesn't always require a whole bunch of hoopla. Maybe I can just have a great relationship and enjoy it and just be happy in that. And, and, you know, um, 
and not have to beat myself up because I don't have everything to, you know, I'm not, it's, it's not the label that everybody thinks I should. So, you know, that's important. Um, also, Mookie said, when someone gets back at you, you do not get revenge for that situation. You have to accept what the person has told you um, than before. And why not um, wait now? Um, that way you're not busting out at someone. See, that's that's so true. And a lot of times we don't really we don't really realize that we do have to do that. We do. Um, Toya has is saying she says so is that how you know when you've truly forgiven someone by not feeling happy for their hurts Toya great question great question um I do believe so I do believe so I think that um when you really and this is my thing you got to really look at do you do you really authentically care for someone love someone or did you lust them See, there's different ways to which we care about people. Sometimes we just care about what they can do for us. Some people we care about them, just authentically care about them. Some people we lust for, some people we love, some people we care about. So we have to really look at, well, what was it that I was really feeling for this person? Because when you're lusting for someone and that person maybe lusts for someone else, then it, it, it's a violation. And also, are we in possession of the person, Toya? We got to look at that. Are we possessing that person? Or is it that the person that we want to be with didn't want to be with us? Whatever those cases could, may be, we really truly learn a lot about ourselves when the person is no longer with us. We really learn a lot about, oh, wait a minute. You know what? I didn't really have in love feelings maybe it was just in lust but we have to step back and look at what is it that we're really driven behind what is really driven behind our emotional tie to the person was it sex was it care was it compassion was it that i felt sorry for them these are different things you got to ask yourself and then comb through it. But when you when you get to the point of saying, I really want to see them happy with or without me, then that goes to show you you had some in love feelings for that person. There was a love. There was an authentic love there. That was not something that it was just a lust. And you only love them when it's convenient for you or you only love them when they're doing good for you or you only in love with them because they seem to love you. All of that stuff is one sided. So that's not technically love. Love is when you care and you understand each other, period. That's what love is. Love is care and understanding, period. Comb through your history. Look back. You'll know who did you really love? Who did you really love? And you'll notice that the ones you really, really love, you still to this day have feelings for. And if they showed up, you'd still care about them. If they came to you bleeding, you would help them clean up the wounds. You would make sure that you would look out for them. You would make sure that they're okay. Telling you, that's when you really know that you care. Absolutely. So great question. I'm glad you asked that, Toya. Glad you asked that. Um, and I hope I answered that for you also. Honey said that it was best for her, um, especially health-wise. So it was best for her not to be revengeful, which is great because that's important. You want to be able to not be so caught up in what I can get. What's, what's my get back? When am I going to get back? How can I get back at this person? I'm mad. I'm, I'm salty. I'm pissed off. I'm going to get back at them. So how can, we, how can we get away from that? Well, you get away from that by being authentically caring about the person. Authentically understanding that person. That's when you really love and care about somebody. Because it's like, oh, wow, I didn't know. I didn't know. Hey, Red Man, glad to see you're here. Um, and hey, Nina, glad to see you, love. Um, Red Man says that mostly sex and, and the money. Well, you know what's so funny, uh, Red Man, is that uh, <laughs> that's why I said that a lot of times it's about sex. And, and sex is a lustful space. So if you are thinking you're in love with someone... Take the sex away from your mind and see if you still love that person. And if you do, then it's not lust. It's love. 
If you don't, then it's probably a lust based relationship. And a lot of times when we're basing it on lust, nine times out of 10, we want to harbor in on that. We don't want to share it with nobody. Look, if you're in a lustful relationship, you don't want to share your lovemaking with nobody else but that person. And you're going to be damned if you're going to let somebody else share him with you or you with her or whatever. So that is just a lustful space. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's truly a in, love, a in love spirit. It's more about lusting for having control over if they go with someone else or not. And that's not really love, you know, so we want to make sure that when we love somebody, it's about caring about them. And when you care about them, it's not just about the sex. It's not (laughs) when you really care about somebody. It's not just about the sex. The sex is a high component. Yes, we enjoy it and all that. But it's not just about the sex. And when you really love somebody and you understand them nothing like it like you can go oh I know I know what my 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 significance gonna do she's gonna do this 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 and this I already know because you understand her that's love (laughs) love is pure understanding and and caring and and don't forget I told I told my group of ladies when I when I had my solo uh workshop I told the ladies that love is based off of care and understanding. When you understand each other, there's a love. Because, oh, I understand them. Even in their even in their differences of way, the way they see things, you understand it. Or if you don't understand it wholeheartedly, you at least try to understand it and you respect them. And then you give yourself patience. You're patient with the one you love. You're patient with their, you know, with their. (laughs) What they're trying to get get into the the settling of themselves as well as being patient with yourself. A lot of times we want to we want to demand stuff, but we don't have patience for um, differences of opinion, differences of, of, of viewpoint, differences of how we see relationships. Lord, have mercy. I know I'm talking to somebody today. We're not always going to see eye to eye when it comes to relationships. Sometimes we see differently. But are you willing to? understand them or are you just going to disassociate because it's not what you want ah that's not what I want so I'm just going to leave them alone or or that's not what they you know it's like we get so hell bent on having everything be according to what we believe it should be rather than sitting back and saying you know what this person really loves me cares and understands me so because of that I want to make sure that I um under them and I stay connected to them and and you know we stay in this relationship because of that because damn it it's not about a label or a ring or a wedding it's about the fact that they care about me and I care about them and that to me is really what it takes to be in a decent beautiful honorable relationship if you want a long-term relationship to mean something But a lot of times we're so stuck on, oh, we got to have this. We got to have that, that we lose sight on what's really important. But when you have somebody in your life that understands you and cares about you, man, listen, whole different ballgame. I'm trying to tell you, it's very hard to do. But I tell I tell single women all the time, listen. You want to, you want to, you want a man. That's what women always say. I want a husband. I want a man and all this. Ladies, y'all better get you some male friends. You hear me? Start getting platonic great friendships and relationships with men. Quality friendships. I'm not talking about sleeping with all of them either. I'm talking about having wholesome, heartfelt friendships. And do you know what you will find? Those men that show up to your door when you tell them that you're in need or you're sick or you're hopeful, uh, hopeless, The ones that show up to your door with chicken pot pie or say, hey, I don't want nothing. I just I heard that you weren't feeling well. I'm on my way to work, but I wanted to bring you over some Robitussin. I know you're not feeling good. So I thought I'd bring this by to you and rolls out. They don't really want nothing. They just care about you. Ladies, listen, y'all better get y'all some male friends. 
and replenish that and then allow the relationships to blossom from that because that is where you want to have a relationship stem from, from a friendship. Let me tell you something. The average relationships don't work. Know why? Because they really don't like each other. <laughs> they don't like each other. They don't get along. How many people say, oh, I love him, but he gets on my nerves. It's like, really? You want to be in a relationship or you want to have somebody to be in a higher significance in your life. When that person and you can lose time and don't even realize, oh, my God, it is this time. And we've been talking all day. That's when, you know, that person cares about you. You too fit. You want to hear about unevenly yoked. We hear about that in church. Oh, yeah, you want them evenly yoked and this and that. OK, evenly yoked is fine and cool and nice. But what about getting along? You have great sex, but don't get along. That don't make sense. That is so backwards. Please stop doing that. Please stop doing that. So what you want to do is you want to focus on having a great relationship and getting past getting so excited over that and not getting into seeing how important it is to have a great friendship with each other. It's not going to do you any good if you don't have a great friendship with each other. If you don't have a great friendship and you can't stand each other, but you have great sex, it's not going to do you no good because it's not going to last, especially when you're talking about it's just a lustful relationship. But if you have a relationship where you're best friends, you can laugh, talk, joke, make fun of each other, calculate all the time go home and have your hair sticking straight up on top of your head no makeup and he still will grab you and love you anyway that's what you want to look for stop getting so caught up in having a relationship with people and you really don't have a connection you really don't even like each other you're like man they get on my nerves i really don't want to be bothered we're only we only get along when it's time to go to bed that is not a relationship that's a lustful situationship that's all that is so i'm just trying to give you all some <laughs> some of the 401 i want you guys to see how important it is that you can have a wholesome relationship you just have to see outside of only being about the sex get past that learn to have a wholesome great relationship by having a beautiful friendship and i tell like i said i tell single women all the time get you some male friends that you care about and the ones that show up with the chicken noodle soup or the Robitussin when you're sick, those are the ones that should have a higher significance in your life because those are the ones that care. And the care has to be involved in your relationship if you want to be in love with somebody. You got to have care and you got to have understanding. And if that man is listening to what you're saying and trying to understand what you're saying, and where you're coming from, your perspectives, that's somebody that cares about you. That's somebody that is what? in a better in a better way of being in a decent relationship with you so these are things that you know i will be going over with you guys eventually i'm gonna do a coaching on it but right now i'm just giving you some just some basics so just really think about that if you want a really good wholesome relationship start with friends friendships is very important because friendships is what matters real relationships when you've got a wholesome friendship trying to tell you it's priceless and those are the those are the relationships that last those are the relationships that last and 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 basically will stand the test of time trust me all right so i'm out of here guys i'm so glad we had this talk i'm hoping that you guys got something about revenge and please share this video um you know share 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 um, also, if you guys have not yet became a member of my group, Live with Carla Nicole group, please send me a uh, request to be a member because we got all kinds of great stuff on my uh, group. So please, please, please share that. Also, um, just stay attuned. You know, um, next week we're going to have another good show once again. All right. So I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. I hope you guys got something from this. All right. So it's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great day. Bye.